one of the features of programmable logic controllers is it has a microcontroller inside which can keep track of time. To access those, those are functional clocks or timers. Now in the timers, you can input numbers such as if I do T number, that's hard coding a certain time, such as stay on for so many minutes. Uh, notation is H for hours, M for minutes, S and MS. For example, T number 2H34M is 2 hours, 34 minutes, 56 seconds, 789 milliseconds. Let's start out with the timer pulse. This diagram will turn on an output for a specific amount of time, 3.45 seconds, when you hit a button. To input the timers, go over here to blocks and drag it over to your ladder diagram. This will then ask what type of timer you're looking at. And I'm looking for a timer. So there I found it. Timer pulse. When the timer pulse sees a rising edge on the input, it will hold the output high for the number down here. So then connect the component workbench. And we'll double click here and do T number 5S. And we'll leave it on for five seconds. The input, let's use input number zero. and have that tied with the red LED. So that will be output. Zero, red LED. And compiling and downloading. Downloading takes a while, so I skipped over that. You can see what's going to happen. As I push the button right here, on the rising edge, it goes high for five seconds. Three, four, going again, pushing button, push, one, two, three, four, five, hold it on for five seconds. When you enter debug mode, you can also see that the time is being updated on the fly, showing how much time has elapsed, output is held high for five seconds. Next is the T on block. T on will leave the output off unless the input is held on for T on seconds. Here's the notation. This means the input has to be held for four seconds for the output to be turned on. With the T on box, I just compiled, downloaded, and went into debug mode, giving you this screen. Notice when I hit the button, I momentarily leave it on. For less than four seconds, nothing happens. If I hold it for four seconds, one, two, three, four, now the output goes on. As soon as I release, it goes off. One, two, three, four, goes on, turns off immediately when I release. That's the T on function. The T off block holds the output on for T off seconds. For example, when you turn off the light switch in the bathroom, you might want to leave the fan running for 30 seconds afterwards to remove the humidity. That looks like the following. It will turn on with the rising edge and remain on for 5 seconds after I release the button. So here's an example of the T-off. I just compiled, downloaded into the microprocessor, and went into debug mode. When I press the button, the output goes high immediately, stays high. As soon as I release, release. It stays on for five seconds. And if I have a momentarily input, the output stays on. Five seconds after I released, 
it turns off. That's the tee-off function. Tee-on-off combines the two. When I hold the input button, it ignores the input unless it's held on for PT seconds. Once I release, it stays on for PT off seconds. And the diagram looks like the following. I have two PT. The input has to be held on for three seconds. Once it's released, the output stays on for six seconds. So here's the T on off block. I take the input and press it momentarily. Nothing happens. I have to hold the input for three seconds. After three seconds, the output goes high. When I release, the output remains high for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. That's T on off. Example of how these are used. Suppose I had a bathroom light and fan. When I go in the bathroom and turn on the switch on input zero, the light should turn on, the fan should turn off. When I turn off the light, the light should go off and the fan should stay on for five seconds. The ladder logic program that does that is the following. When I turn on the fan, turn on the light, the light turns on. Here's the set. When I turn off the light, the light goes high, the light goes off. While the light is on, I use a tee-off clock. While the light is on, the fan is on. Five seconds after the light goes off, the fan turns off. So here's how the program works. When I hit the on button, the light immediately turns on, and the fan turns on. When I hit the off button, the light turns off immediately. Five seconds later, the fan turns off. So here we go. Hit the on button, the light turned on, and the fan turned on. That's the red and yellow light. When I hit the off button, the light turns off immediately. Five seconds later, the fan turns off. Next, let's generate a clock tick every two seconds. This is a T flip flop. Every time clock goes high, the output toggles. This is a timer. Every two seconds, the scale steps to two, it outputs high, it sends a pulse, the pulse clears the counter, and it starts counting again. So here's an example of a flashing yellow light. Every two seconds, clock pulses. Every time it pulses, the yellow light toggles. So here's the stoplight. State transition logic does work for stoplights, but it's an absolute bear. Using timers, it's much simpler. Here, if you're not red, not yellow, you've got to be green. That's the default. After four seconds, the yellow light turns on. When the yellow light turns on, that turns off green. When the yellow light's on, it stays on for two seconds. At that point, the yellow light is turned off and the red light is turned on. When the red light turns on, it stays on for five seconds, which then turns off the red light. When it's red and yellow turned off, we go back to green. So here you see the operation. Red light for five seconds. Green for four. Yellow for two. Red for five. And you can see on the counters in debug mode, four seconds of green turns on, and two seconds for yellow, five seconds for red.